So Teresa, it's so nice to see you and thank you for joining me on this, you know, nice little conversation that we're going to have today. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> the truth, when she smiles at you, she'll say, angels don't lie. So we're talking about why now, and we're talking in context of healing work. So I'm going to let you introduce who you are to everyone and just, you know, say a few words about what you do. Sure. I am a, a spiritual counselor. I like to call myself a self-love activator. Um, I help people uh, really start to appreciate and embody who they really are. Um, so um, and I have a lot of different tools that I use, but primarily <clears throat> I feel like um, I learned a lot of them in these last short number of years through the support that um, I, I received through you. Um, so you've been a, a mentor to me and uh, it's, 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 you've helped me a lot. I think it just like, a, I feel like I just was a mirror for you. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that, and that I appreciate. There's always been that little bit of a push, right? Um, being able to see who, who I am and then helping me to see who I am. And um, so that's, that's been a gift of having the relationship. Right, because our pain can be bigger and more prevalent in our life than anything else, don't you think? Well, yeah, I think our pain is what gets in the way of our seeing that the pain almost doesn't matter, right? Like, okay, so the pain teaches us what it is that we need to know about ourselves and how we can best help other people, but the pain doesn't have to define us. Yeah, uh, learning how to not have it define a person, that, that's been my journey, and that's certainly the journey of the people that, that come to me uh, for support. Hmm. You had mentioned uh, right before we started about uh, you were, you were remembering the first session because that's how we, we first came together. We first met through uh, mutual friends and then you, you reached out for a session. I did. I, I, um, I reached out for a session because I met you at this giant outdoor party where I felt like I didn't have my center. Do you know, like I felt like I was like having fun, I guess, but truly not really there. And, <clears throat> and then I saw you this and you were like just happy and you were sort of just sitting you know with one or two people and like seemed joyful and I thought she's somebody that I'd like to get to know better and then um, as time unwound I realized that you did Reiki and energy sort of work and I thought well I think that Jeannie is somebody that I'd like to see and of course then I learned that you were Catholic and I thought, oh, well, this is very comfortable for me. Um, how could this be Reiki, Catholic, all this stuff? Like, and I, and um, so these labels that were super important to me at the time helped me to feel comfortable. When I went to a healing session, the first healing se session that you, uh, that you helped me with, um, the, one of the memories that I have most clearly is that for whatever reason, you felt it was important to almost usher me back to my car. You, it was like, and you were kind of sweeping your hands towards me, towards the car, like almost like, you know, I was like, what is that? And it was like angels, you know, like sort of here, Teresa, this is, you know, I want this to go home with you kind of thing. And, um, and so it was just, it was so touching to me and it moved me tremendously. And there've been so many other times along the way um, in my healing journey. Of course, you invited me to your spiritual healers class. That's what you called it at the time. And I thought, well, why the heck am I going to, I'm not a spiritual healer, first of all, and I'm a mess, you know, like I don't feel like strong enough in myself or I, I'm always, you know, the pain that comes around, I don't know how to manage that in a way that, that how could I, possibly help others. And by the way, this is after a master's degree in counseling. Do you know, like, so what? Do you know, like, that's still, that knowledge, that intellect wasn't enough to, for me to really still find what was going to help me feel better in this life, you know? 
I took the spiritual healers class and um, became a so-called spiritual healer, but never wanted to own it, right? Mm -hmm. Never thought, what the heck is a spiritual healer? You know, it's like kind of what I was thinking. What is that? Then a process of unwinding and understanding myself better and sort of getting rid of all labels and all titles and really learning how to become present with myself. You know, there are still times where I feel that there's emotional things in life, but then I always come back to this sort of centered space of where am I right now, you know, and where I always call on the guidance of God, the guidance of heaven, the guidance of the angels to support me wherever I am, and then I'm okay. Right then, then whatever happens happens. It's but I know that I at least have myself where I need to be, and um, and so yeah, you you've always um, sort of <clears throat> seen where I am, and then invited me to do more. Yeah, I think that's the the gift of the angels, where they can showcase where I can push a little bit and mirror something a little bit. Um, maybe in a different way, maybe just like as a reminder, um, cueing you to, or whoever I'm working with, that we are our own healers to a sense of a degree, right? We, I do believe we're not meant to do it on our own, but there are things we have to do on our own. So I'd love your thoughts on what it means for you, like how, what it means that we're all healers. Well, we all are. We all are. That's our divine right. Like that is, I feel like we're all here to heal others, to heal ourselves, to heal the planet, right? I mean, right now, and what's all going on in the planet, it's just, you know, no one could have imagined this level of pain to have erupted, right? And of course, you know, you could get sort of, I, just in this moment, I was like feeling emotional about it, right? You know, like you can feel that it's just so awful and it's so tremendous and that so many people suffer and are suffering, but we can sort of get embroiled in that suffering. We can sort of stay stuck in that suffering. And I know I've done it, you know, I know that, you know, I think each individual can do it. But I think what's also there is that each individual doesn't have to be there. They can be in love. They can be in acceptance, in reciprocity, in equanimity, in equality for everybody, in you know, just open-heartedness towards everybody. But that, and, and all of that can flow, but it has to come from here first. And it can't come from here first until it's from here, God, here in your heart first. So that's the break, to me, that's the breakdown. And it's really, I mean, it's, I understand there's people out there that aren't gonna, like they're gonna think, oh yeah, I love everybody, what the heck? Like that's, how's that gonna solve everything? But actually that is how everything gets solved. I understand that to be true, that when we truly love ourselves, because we are connected to God and in that love, right? That true love. Then from there, we can offer that to everybody. We have nothing else actually to offer to anybody. That's all we are, you know? And, and you know, it's always, it's always about cleaning it up, right? Mm -hmm. You like to say, you know, you've said to me, Teresa, offer what it is that you have to offer to somebody on a silver platter, right? In other words, like use those use the silver platter to treat the other person, no matter what they've said to you, no matter what's going on in your head, remember to treat them in that way. So it's always a practice. We're never going to get it right. We're always going to be struggling because we're human beings. We're human beings having a divine experience. No, right? Well, no, we're divine beings having a human experience, excuse me. And that's where the mix up is, is that because we're not divine beings, we don't have all the answers. We can't. We have a physical body, a personality. Uh, we have things in our history that upset us and trigger us. We have wounds. Um, and all of those things come out to the world towards our personal relationships and then out to the world on a broader level in a sort of fear and anger and hostility and, and you know, and 
us versus them. And it's never us versus them. It's not. But the pain point is, it's us against ourselves. Mm needing to be heard, needing to be valued, whatever the trigger pain point, right? So um, not being a whole unit with the divine and then equality, Mm, right? Love, equality, love, equality, love, right? I, I think what you're saying is really beautiful because one, there's this offering of what it's like to go to a healing session and have somebody guide you and that you do the healing work. And then what does it mean that we are all healers? We all have the capacity to heal ourselves and to heal others, to heal the world. We all have that. It's, it's a divine gift. It's something that's just sort of, it's a natural part of being a human being. But, but we don't know it because of what we learn along the way. We forget what it is because of, you know, just because of our story and but it is, it's, it's, we all have that gift, divinely inspired to heal ourselves. Healing ourselves comes first and then healing others that are open to being healed, right? You know. And I love that you just said that because isn't that the most important thing mm-hmm. that we heal ourselves first mm-hmm. and then we move forward and then we help another. And if we try to help another without healing our deep, dark, the darkest parts of our soul, those big wounds, we end up falling into a pattern of overgiving and overshadowing our own pain Mm -hmm. and not paying attention to like the sticky or yuckiness that we have going on in our own life to, to clean and heal and to, you know, change the vibration of it. Yeah, we do have the power to do it. And it's always just, you mentioned all the sticky parts. Those are the parts that take a lot of work and they take a lot of introspection. And I don't know that I would have ever gotten there, no matter, and believe me, I mean, I've prayed throughout my whole life. You know, I've had a very close relationship, I feel, with God throughout my whole life. But I don't feel that I could have gotten to the places of fixing what's really sticky and yucky in me until I really started to have more of a focus on what am I feeling right now? This goes back to your book, the, um, the divine principles book, the the goddess, you goddess, you, the the book that you wrote that. um, So it's, it's all in there in terms of take out the pen and paper and write down what's going on, journal all of those feelings. Then from there, you sort of start to understand I guess intellectually, but also on a spiritual sort of heart-based level, what it is that your soul is trying to tell you. Because that soul always knows. It always knows, Mm. you know, but it's the mind. It's the mind and the triggers of the mind. I always think it's the mind that causes the problems, you know, and So if we, right, so we think we need to think about everything. We think we need to know everything. We think we need to study everything. Sure, those are all helpful. They help us to become, I guess, more of who we want to be personally. But, and they also help us to help people. There's, but, but if we're not listening in our heart and with our soul, then we're never getting anywhere. We're not, we're not, we're still spinning our wheels. Um, Helping me to stop every morning wake every morning, I do my meditation, I do my prayer, I have my journal, I write down what it is that I am going through on at any given point, or whenever there's something that happens that to me is very upsetting. It's always just going back to, okay, who am I? You know, I am, right? I am that I am, like I am love. You've taught me that, right? I am love. You go back to this moment of I am love, and then you call on whatever it is, whatever angel or whatever guidance that you need. And then from there proceed so that those sticky parts start to come undone. They start to get clear. You start to have more clarity about how you want to be moving forward, right? But, but isn't, that, it, isn't the unraveling a little uncomfortable? Oh, it's painful. Yeah. Because then you have to look at yourself. You have to look at yourself in a way, what parts of this am I causing? What parts of this am I adding to the problem? Um, You know, I I mean, those are the deep, those are the hardest questions. Right. But with, with the lens of 
self-love now. You, that unraveling part is not done in, in a way where you're not held in supportive embrace from this divine, you know, essence that you're meant to be here. And it's not about punishing or shaming yourself. It's rather just seeing it and then reflecting like, how can I redirect and what can I take away from this circumstance now? Right. Of course. Yes. Right. So the unlayering of self-love, right. The unlayering of just knowing that that is the divine essence, right. It is about mm -hmm. loving yourself. You know, you read all these things out there about um, self-care, you know, and you think, well, that's such an overused sort of kind of idea. And people, you know, there are a lot of people that poo-poo it in terms of like, well, stop already, you know, like enough self-care. But I am telling you that, you know, and I mean, I am not in any way trying to disregard anybody who who is, you know, very religious and so on. I, I absolutely have respect for everybody's place in the world. But there is a space of self-respect and self-love that I couldn't have found in certain, certain ways of living, right? In certain prayers, in certain, certain um, uh, practices. I had to sort of let go of some of that so that I could love myself more fully, so that I could actually see that God, that, that whatever you want to call God, you know, but for me, God, loves me unconditionally and I don't have to be or do anything in order to be loved. I'm fine as I am. He, she, whatever God loves me completely as I am. So if God loves me completely as I am, then I better love myself just as I am. And I know you said that to me along the way, like, okay, who are you, Teresa, to not love yourself with this God that loves you? You know, like, of course, I need to love myself. I have to put myself first. And that meant taking a break. That meant sitting down and writing in a journal. That meant, oh my gosh, that experience was so upsetting to me. I need to want to grab a cup of tea and sit down. I need to take a walk. I need to care for myself on some level. That's how, you know, I love. Think I, I really love what you're saying because it also brings up like this uncomfortableness of, putting ourselves first, like there's something, there's some, something yucky about it. There's some mm -hmm. uh, undertone that's like, if you do that, it's like egotistical. You, you aren't caring about other people. Um, putting yourself in that regard isn't, isn't the light. So I'd love your thoughts on that. Yeah. Well, that's, and that was certainly a, a real struggle for me because I always felt that it was my, um, it was a gift of mine to give to others first, mm. to do for others, to blanket everybody with whatever they needed. And that if there was space at the end of my day, time for me. And, um, and unfortunately days go on and on and on. And then I'm not present with the people that I love in the way that I want to be because I'm not present with myself in the way that I want to be. So, I mean, I think, and there is sort of almost, uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully a benefit, if there can be, of COVID is that people had to stop and really recalibrate, you know, and take a break. Because in our culture, we're sort of taught that you need to keep going. And you would never say to somebody, oh, yeah, you know, what did you do all day? I did nothing. You know, like it would be, you'd be ashamed of yourself for saying that you took care of yourself, that you, right? But the point being back to back to the point is that if you don't care for yourself first you really don't have the energy to care for other people you don't you can't give them all that you are you can't you give them parts of you you give them almost like the martyred part of you mm -hmm. or the 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 frazzled part of you the maybe the angry part of you you the know yucky part uh, right the sticky yeah, the yucky part right? right right the one that needs support wait a second here, wait a second, I'm supposed to be like giving love to people that I, I'm supposed to be supporting. How can I support if I don't support myself first? So it really required me to really start to shift how I approached 
everything in my life, you know, because what we, we feel, we want to fill the void, right? The pain mm -hmm. point. So that looks very different for people. It looks, some people fill their void with, with food, with mm -hmm. addict, with addictions, with over people pleasing, right? Mm -hmm. By, by reflecting outward their pain and not healing and realizing that's what, that's what this human experience is. Mm -hmm. uh, and the gift of the slowing down and the gift of our own viewing of our own mortality, it, it can reflect on, wow, I can clean up my, myself. I can do some releasing and healing and cleaning of whatever in this, in this time that I have to be still. Mm -hmm. What's no longer working, right? Yeah, well, that's it. You have to look at what isn't working. What is sabotaging you? What doesn't lift your spirit? What doesn't help you? to feel good about yourself. If you're in any life situation where you're just doing it because it's compulsive or you feel that it's a necessity or you feel that it's sort of the right thing to do, then it's not really, are you really listen, I, I question whether or not at that same point you're really listening to yourself. You know, it, it, we have to sort of stop and take a moment and check in with ourselves. What makes sense to me right now? Um, I check ourselves before we wreck ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the the yeah. cue in, like slowing down. Mm -hmm. Teresa, like I, I so appreciate you sharing your your storyline and kind of going into your pain point and and then the journey of not believing you were a healer, but then owning that part. And I'm just curious on like what your thoughts are about like why now? Why is it so important for for people to claim that about themselves? especially now, especially now. I mean, the world is changing. And, you know, I like to think, I know for myself, and I know for so many people that I've worked with, that the most, we oftentimes in life, the most difficult things can bring us to a new place, to we can learn from those challenges and, and become completely different. We can transform ourselves. We can transmute that mess and make it into something beautiful and bright and divine. And so I've seen it in my clients. I've seen it in my own life. And I have to believe that, I have to believe that what we're going through in this world right now with that, that, that something beautiful will come of this. I never lose hope. I never lose hope that that beautiful something is here. Just here. We don't, it won't be here tomorrow. It won't be here next week, but it's coming. And I think that it can come more easily, more swiftly, the more people that can center themselves and know their own worth. Because when they can center themselves in divine light, and act out of that divine soul presence, then they, each of them, can then offer that to the world in a really beautiful way. And so I would encourage everybody to look at their own selves, what they need to heal about themselves, to take your class to learn how they can heal themselves. Because when they heal themselves, then they can heal everything they can heal we can all heal the world we're all here to heal this planet that's mm -hmm. we're here to, here to heal each other and this planet and um and that can only start with ourselves and that's where you come in well i i i'm so humbled by the work that i do i i feel blessed to have the ability of connecting with spirit and then the discernment of like where I start, but then where spirit is, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, and I shared with you in the beginning when we were talking about what it looked like for me, you know, walking you to your car that day, it really was, it really was not me. Yes, I was physically doing it, but I was led to do that. I was led to have you leave with this, with this abundance of love surrounding you, supporting you, reminding you that you didn't have to go home alone. And I love that about healing work that there's a continuum, right? There's this, if, if we engage it long enough, there's this continuum of evolving and releasing and 
shifting old viewpoints and having a new pattern, new healthier patterns come in, right? So we hold space, I think, for each other, you know, when we're healers, if you gift the love that you have to other people, not everybody has that ability. Not everybody is made to go out and do the same type of work. And I think that's, like I said, when I say I'm humbled, like the, the angel healer program, which, you know, was the spiritual healers class, when a, underwent this really beautiful transformation last year. Um, and it was really funny how it kind of happened. Teresa and I had a conversation too. We were talking about what it meant to be a spiritual healer and how that was like, almost like, ooh, didn't feel good. And, um, and I was feeling unsettled too. And so I brought it to my meditation and the angels were like, yeah, call it angel healing, like just lighten it. And it's not of us, but it is for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. And that's, that's, that's what you do, though, Jeannie, is that whole ability to be truly connected uh, with the angels at all time, with the divine at all time, right? To, I, I, mean, I don't know. That's what I see. That's what I see you as the leader here, you know, that, that you have shown my, myself and I think so many other people, you know, how to, um, how to connect in that way um with with what is true inside of us so um yeah i i i i'm grateful to to have this this space with you and this this just this growth because of your your mentorship really yeah I, thank you so much for like all those kind words i i just <laughs> and like i don't look at myself that way i look at myself as really just humbled with the ability of being able to sh just share I, and I so want to share with with everyone I mean it's why I do so many different things I mean you guys people that are watching the video they you know if you're my angel healer uh, tribe you know we're going on we're doing card readings we're just having those connections we're keeping it light we're we've got the angels don't lie I've got so much energy that runs through me constantly that I just want that love to to be pushed out and if one person is positively shifted then i i'm so uplifted then i know that it's that what i'm doing is okay like i'm okay i'm i'm good yeah amazing it's amazing it's amazing you do have a lot of energy you have a tremendous amount you're like moving quick and uh full of so many ideas and uh yeah it's a great thing yeah but it's a i'm, I'm i am uh grateful so thank you Jeannie, for giving me this opportunity today too I'd love to hear like your one main takeaway from, I guess, I, I guess, cause there's, there's different levels to how we've been working together, but um, you as a healer and your one takeaway after you went through the, the program the first time, I kind of want to put it in pieces. Like, because mm. I, I, I think I want people to understand, like you can go through this, several times it doesn't have to be a one-time deal right because they're broken down into these levels of uh level one is all about self-healing interreflection, deep deep dark you know painful things uh level two is is you're coming out you're you're now in the light and it's about working in alignment with who you are and level three is all about purpose and passion and bringing those all together so when i first taught this uh, it was the spiritual healers class and we didn't have the level. So I'm curious, like, because there's two different times that you've gone through what, what your reflection is each time. Um, the first time I went through, I just knew that I had been somehow been able to look at the world differently, look at myself differently, you know? So I didn't exactly know what that meant. I didn't exactly understand all of it. You know, I could, it took a while to integrate it, but what I did do what I knew I needed to do was continue to uh, journal each and every day and really pray and find a space for just self care, right? To, just to continue to care for myself and that and, and, and trust that that this was a process, right, of healing and unlayering. And so um, it was all a lot for me at first, you know, to just really integrate. I couldn't. So, you know, you walk away and you just, you just, I, for me, I just trusted that I'd understand it over time, 
that it wouldn't be an immediate, you know, and that as long as I continue to practice the, the principles that you shared, that somehow I would find my own process, you know, and I would find my own, my own way. So that was, yeah, that was what I learned. Mm -hmm. And you actually taught, you know, at my last, um, the one in, in October, the, the, with, with the new change up, the level, level one, you came in and I invited you to, to do a session with my, with my people. And so you got to stay for that day and, and then be, you know, in the online membership and, you know, see the replays and all of that. I'm just curious, like, how was that from point A, like where you were to, to then, to that I, moment? I feel like it's an amazing transformation to me. Like, to me, I feel like I've changed so much as a person, um, just in terms of appreciating my uh, competencies, you know, just sort mm. of seeing myself for who I am rather than <clears throat> what, I do, what I'm not. Do you know, like, it's easy. We've talked pain points, blah, blah, you know, like all this stuff. People have experiences and sometimes they get stuck in defining themselves by those. I said this earlier. And so now to be at a place where that is not how I define myself, do you know, that is, that is something that taught me a lot, but to be there those years later and to be able to offer that uh, class, a, a group past life regression um, experience that I was thrilled to do it, you know, but also that I entered that room in a different space, you know, just in a different mind more just appreciating who I am, right? Rather than, uh, you know, the way I lived for, for all those years before, you know, so. So that's the journey, right? Back into self-love, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And respect of who you are. And when you, when you were able to really be in that space is when, that's when your light was seen, right? Like, because we don't necessarily want to feel the old way we still get stuck in bad patterns and that really puts a damper on our light and then when we step out and we start to believe have faith trust god mm -hmm. then the light is there again and it's so clear and you can see it so the the mirroring of of that in in particular in other people i think happens sometimes effortlessly and sometimes it needs a little support along the way um, yeah well i feel like you are adept at figuring out which way it is but again i suppose you're just connecting within to understand for each person what it is that may, they may need at that moment yeah well, that, that's the yeah that's the channeling part that's the going to heaven part and having you know, whether it's Jesus or their angels, um, the Holy Mother, it depends on that person mm. and, their, and their belief system too of, mm. you know, what will come forward. So even though the class, I, I think this is a cool thing, like even though the class is, is kind of vast and, and it has a curriculum, there's this, there's this area of movement for who's in that class. Yeah. Why that group was brought together in the first place? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that particular group is just sort of, they're meant to be together, right? To learn from each other, I, I'm sure. But um, yeah, I, 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 so you're, you're saying that, um, that like they all come together and that they all, they're all learning something from each other? Yeah. yeah, definitely. There's a re there's always a reason. Either there's similar pain points mm. in that even though you're can be vastly different than someone else, uh, there are same similar pain points. And you, when you're going through the unlayering of your own self, it's it's beautiful to watch and witness somebody else unlayering at the same time. And you can be empathetic, and that's how we begin to understand our gifts and we start working with our senses and uh, we really dive into what that looks like. We're not meant to be in this life without connection to God, without having that. It's, we're all born. We've all come here with this ability, a sixth sense, however you want to say it. It's just, we don't, we haven't been taught really how to work with it in a divine, holy way. 
Yeah, yeah, no, we, we haven't been taught. And, you know, <clears throat> I mean, it's 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 the way that society has has been created and 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 uh and the way families families are that it's just there's there is a disconnection you know and in terms of that and i don't i i guess i don't know enough about other cultures to to speak i i think that this is probably more on some level almost like a westernized sort of mindset of you know and rule based and you know just sort of this is the way things are supposed to sort of be rather than um cracking open you know and just sort of being you know just who are we spiritually you know and and sort of you know because i you know when i speak about how we're all meant to sort of um you know, really align within ourselves and understand ourselves and then make choices based on that. There is a little bit of, um, there is a little bit in my mind of conflict in terms of if I were a, a, a parent of young children right now, how would I go about teaching my child, you know, to mm -hmm. align with their divine essence and really listen in here but also follow the rules that I'm creating for you or follow, right? So this is like a, um, uh, it's, a it's a balance in terms of understanding um, how to proceed. But I think that ideally it's always, it's, it's best to always go back to what is in here and what is connected above. Right. Right. Yeah. And I feel like that's, we can't speak for another culture we can, we can only come from the frame point of where we are uh we, we cannot pretend to be what we're not mm -hmm. and it and i think that goes to the point of we cannot give what we don't have to give which is the level of love that you have for yourself is what you put out into the world so if we can be interreflective and really start to nurture and grow from that place that uh we have a divine purpose mm -hmm. Right. God does speak to us and whatever that looks like for you in terms of, you know, God, Jesus, however you need to communicate with source and identify with that to be expansive. Like this journey here is not the end point, right? This, this journey here is temporary for the expansion of our soul though, right? We need to have these experiences and, and go through, different things in order to be expansive and and grow so that when we are in that heavenly space we'll continue from that point on and continue growing yeah no spot on i agree i think Teresa, like for for yourself where you are now in your healing journey like it's never over correct never over we're always growing so this the spiritual practice and i love i love this because i think it's super important to know that we are brought classes trainings we're brought things you know people to to kind of mirror to us who mm -hmm. we really are and and i know you you've also you know taken trainings and done things and to be more expansive and at times maybe the things that weren't really meant or a match for your soul mm -hmm. but from this point on don't you feel like now that you've had these tools you're able to discern and really like the teachers are, are coming to you, the new things are coming to you so that you really are like vibrating different? Well, yeah, it's so beautiful, really. I mean, so once, again, once I came to a space where I was able to love myself for who I am, and again, connecting always with, with the divine, I, I have found that no matter what it is that I am challenged by or need to know more about, that, I mean, it, it always happens. There's something new that comes across my desk um, that um, comes to me that I, I, um, that I wasn't expecting, but it's mm -hmm. totally exactly what I needed to hear and learn. And those kind of confirmations, do you know, it's sort of like those, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I don't know if you could see this picture behind me. It's a picture of lilacs. Mm -hmm. And, and um, that, I found that picture on a weekend uh, the weekend directly after I had been to my own spiritual healers class with you on a Thursday morning, it was, and 
you were talking about all the different clairs, you know, whether a person can see something or smell something or hear something or, right, so that every person has these gifts and I don't need to get into them. But anyway, for me, I had a thought about the Blessed Virgin Mary and then I had the scent of lilacs come right into that kitchen where we were sitting at the lilacs. And seeing that picture that very same weekend was confirmation for me that, and it was a very interesting the way that all, I don't need to get into it, but th that it all came together. It was confirmation to me that, you know, the Blessed Mother is always with me, right? For me, that means something growing up Catholic. You know, everybody's different. But the point is, is that there's all sorts of confirmations that happen over and over again. And they happen outside when I'm walking my dog. They happen, you know, you know, in all sorts of avenues. As soon as I have opened up to the idea and the heart space to know that I am always supported, that, that, that in that, the healing really just keeps coming at me almost. It just sort of keeps flowing towards me and through me in ways that I never could have imagined, like in just beautiful ways that, that are indescribable. So I love that you're saying that, like coming at me, like- yeah, they're just so sort of here all true. the time. It happens all the time. You know, it happens every day. It happens in a moment. It happens, you know, all the time. So- Because that's in the surrender, right? Yeah, just knowing that I don't have any control over any other people, any mm -hmm. other uh, any outcomes, any situations. All I can do is be present here. Right. That's it. And then that's when everything opened up. That's when everything, it's just there now. It's just part of me. A question for you. So she says, I always, I was always taught selflessness is next to godliness. I feel it screwed up my whole life and I became more of a pleaser. Why do you think that philosophy was twilight, especially by the Catholic church? I mean, I think, you know, it's hard. I, I can't, question. you know, I don't want to, I, I, again, I don't want to in any way put down anything that people believe in, but I do think that there is a sort of patriarchy, you know, to some extent, like, the people were illiterate. The people were, the people didn't understand, you know, like a lot of different things. And the the people in charge wanted on some level to make sure that they had rules. And perhaps a lot of that was out of compassion. Maybe some of that was out of control. But, you know, you know, we are taught certain things by different religions that may not serve us. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important thing is to sort of go, does that make sense here? Does that really make sense in my heart? Like, because if it feels confused or it feels conflicted in some way, then I think it's really important to put it over there for a little while mm. and let it just be over there and then try to discern whether or not it works for you. Um, that's where I would say the answers come, right? Yeah. I agree. I love that. I love that. It's that discernment of, I, I do feel like we, there are, there are all these rules that can really box us in mm -hmm. and thought patterns that I feel are, some are no longer working. And so that's the evolution, the shift and the change, right? The things that we're, we're moving out of. Mm -hmm. so that was a really uh, great question. And I think it's a, uh, it brings up some, some thoughts about, you know, are we passing that, that type of, pattern on are we going to change and go to divine intelligence and realize you know being being one with god means self-love it's not about ego or uh, you know always in the i rather it is about i being of service i being of god i being of love this has been amazing i hope you guys have really enjoyed this is Teresa we actually went so much longer than what we thought right we were like oh we'll go on for like 15 <laughs> and uh and I so appreciate I so appreciate your time and I I see you I say that to you all the time like I see you I see your light I see the good that you bring to your to your family to your people to the people that are close to you thank you thank you I appreciate it and I'm so glad we went on I I'm glad to be able to talk and uh, share this space. 
Um, do Doreen uh, just mentioned, not everyone who practices the things that you ladies share are Christ-centered. You're right, uh, uh, Doreen, absolutely. That's one of the reasons why I share, one of the reasons I say um, I am a Catholic girl in an angel world. And I don't necessarily identify myself as one religion because I believe I mean, there's so many aspects of other religions that I absolutely love, you know, there's, there's parts of Judaism I love, and I, I lean towards that. Um, I'm, I'm a follower of Christ. I'm a follower of love. And that's what I believe in. This expansiveness of, of my soul isn't going to be confined to one, one thing any longer. Mm. I'm the same. I, I feel the same. But I do, there are parts about my, my upbringing, my, my Catholic that I absolutely love there you know it's the the dedication it's the showing up it's it's connecting it's it's some of the prayers you know and it's where I first saw spirits where I first saw angels so there is there is some love that will always be present there mm -hmm. yeah thank you so much for giving us your time your space I know I honor it and I know I can speak for Teresa that she does as well. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, everybody, for, for being here with us. And thank you, Jeannie, for hosting me. I appreciate it. Love you all. Love you, Teresa. Have a beautiful day. Okay. Bye now. Truth, when she smiles at you, she'll say,